Charm Offensive. Let's play hardball. Good evening, I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Tonight, the President of the United States continues to disown and insult America's cities. Trump's latest target, Baltimore, Charm City to its proud citizens. And insulting Baltimore as a rat-infested mess, Trump is making racial division a core element of his re-election campaign. And today, he continued his incendiary attacks on yet another prominent elected official of color, Baltimore's Congressman Elijah Cummings, chairman of the House Oversight Committee. In an early morning tweet Saturday, Trump blasted Cummings' criticism of the treatment of migrant children at the southern border, saying his Baltimore district is far worse and more dangerous. The president called Cummings' district a disgusting rat and rodent-infested mess, adding if he spent more time in Baltimore, maybe he would help clean up the very dangerous and filthy place. The president later stated no human being would want to live there. He's talking about Baltimore. He also shrugged off criticism that his own attack was racist, tweeting, if racist Elijah Cummings would focus more of his energy on helping the good people of his district and Baltimore itself, perhaps progress could be made in fixing the mess that he has helped to create. Well, the latest attack on Mr. Cummings comes just two weeks after President Trump tweeted that a group of minority congresswomen, three of them born in the USA, should go back to the crime-infested countries they came from. Well, the Baltimore Sun responded to the president's latest broadside towards Cummings and their city in a scathing editorial headline, it's better to have a few rats than to be one. Writing, Mr. Trump sees attacking African-American members of Congress as good politics as it both warms the cockles of the white supremacists who love him and causes so many of the thoughtful people who don't to scream. But after a weekend of targeting Cummings and Baltimore, Trump expanded his attacks this morning to the Reverend Al Sharpton, founder of the National Action Network, of course, and my colleague ahead of a press conference by the civil rights activist in Baltimore. The president wrote, Al is a con man, a troublemaker, always looking for a score, adding he hates whites and cops. Well, Reverend Al Sharpton, president of the National Action Network and host of Politics Nation, and my colleague here on MSNBC joins me now. Well, you're in the crossfire. In fact, you may be in the crosshairs, uh, Reverend. And what do you make of that? Because well, he's I done think... to you what he, he's given you a platform to talk to the president of the United States on equal ground right now, because that's where he's going. I think that what he is clearly doing is decided that he's going to have a race-based campaign by going after high-profile blacks and others of color, certainly uh, by calling Elijah Cummings a racist, then all of a sudden, I hate whites. Yet he says he's been knowing me 25 years. He's come to Nash Action Network's conventions, even though we've disagreed with him. Uh, it, it, it shows a lack of intellect that he calls everybody a racist, from Elijah Cummings to me to the squad, as, as they're called, they're anti-Semites. It, and, and you really have to ask yourself, is this the kind of conduct we expect out of the president of the United States? If the president really felt that Elijah Cummings was a racist, he would say how? If he really thought I was a racist, then why did he come to my conventions? Why did he call me after he won the election and invite me to meet with him? So I think that we'll, we really have to resist taking the bait and really raise the issues that we continue to raise on income inequality and health care and the things that matter to Americans, which is why the former Republican chairman, Michael Steele, and I were in Baltimore today talking about the erosion of black home ownership. We were there trying to take care of things that the president ought to be concerned about rather than trying to name call Elijah Cummings, me or anyone else. Well, in his testimony before Congressman Cummings Oversight Committee in February, President Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, testified to what he swore under oath were the president's private comments about African-Americans and cities. Here goes. Mr. Trump is a racist. He once asked me if I can name a country run by a black person that wasn't a <laughs> This was when Barack Obama was president of the United States. And while we were once driving through a struggling neighborhood in Chicago, he commented that only black people could live that way. And he told me that black people would never vote for him because they were too stupid. Why do you think he wants a political race war? 
I think that he really doesn't know any other way. Uh, you know, for many years, we have fought him from Central Park Five, where he tried to get the death penalty for the five young black and brown men that were proven innocent, all the way to his own discrimination. And people kept saying, well, give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, I toured with Newt Gingrich I, and others that I've disagreed with, but it was never this kind of racial rancor back and forward. And for his own lawyer, who set up meetings with me and Trump? to say he was a racist and what he would say in private shows that, at his core, this is how he feels about people of color, particularly blacks, and the way he tries to fight back is accuse us of things that he himself have a deep-seated feeling for. Remember now, uh, Chris, we had a shooting uh, last night at a festival. He wakes up this morning and he deals with attacking me rather than dealing with the shooting. We need a president that's going to be responsive to the needs yeah. of the people in this country and not this demographic. Godfrey. When we grew up, uh, you and I, with I'm a bit older than you, but I remember, maybe not as vividly as you did, George Corley Wallace of Alabama. And he, even he, would hedge his language a bit. He'd talk about pointy-headed bureaucrats with their attache cases with, uh, with uh, peanut butter sandwiches in them. He'd make fun of bureaucrats, and he'd talk about outside agitators. But this guy's personal. He calls Very people personal. by name. He gets, he gets people, African-American people, he names them the squad, he knows their names, he calls them out. Who's he trying to get to like him with this stuff? I think he underestimates the intelligence of the American people. I think that many independent voters, many moderate voters, even in the Republican Party, are not going to go for this. But he feels that if he causes this racial divide, that he can stack up enough electoral votes to win. And I think he's going to see a massive resistance in that. Every black with a high profile is not a racist. Donald Trump is not a race. To disagree with him does not make you a racist. It means you disagree with Donald Trump. And I think that people are smart enough and intelligent enough to know that. Well, a man who thought the same thing was Frank Rizzo, the former mayor of Philadelphia when I grew up. And you know what he did? He, he escalated the black registration beyond the white registration. There's so many blacks registered, he was finished. Maybe Trump will do the same thing. He'll, he'll be the best registrar of black voters in history, perhaps, in a weird, perverse way. What do you think? I think so. I think that what will happen is that America will reject him, even in a good economy, because rather than govern, he is too busy demagoguing and trying to, to scapegoat people for his own lack of ability to really bring the country together and deal with things that are real and continue a wave that Barack Obama okay. had brought this country on. My colleague, it's an honor to have you on, sir. Thank you, Reverend Al Sharpton. Thank you, Chris. In the on the defense, which is a good place to be with Trump. Be on the defensive. Only <laughs> defense. He's on the offense. Only he's the defense. offensive one. The only defense against Donald Trump is stay on the offense. He's got the right one. If he wants to fight, he can come to me first anytime. And not just for lunch. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Reverend. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.